And welcome to Car Cone Carne. Happy hump day. I'm James Van Oslo. It's Quarantine Cone Carne. Sponsored tonight, sponsored this week by our friends at Happy to Meet You. Happy to Meet You is Chicagoland's online butcher shop. Those cuts of meat, the, the prime rib, the filet mignon you get at the steakhouses, that's the same stuff that Happy to Meet You gets. They deliver it to your door. Next day, local delivery, contactless delivery. And let's face it, I... I I was just having this conversation. I don't go anywhere. I'm here every day. I'm here every night. When I'm at home, as often as I am, as I have been this year, I want to eat food that kicks ass. I, I'm tired of eating garbage. Happy to meet you. Scratches that itch. I, the, the chops, uh, their chicken, their burgers. Oh, my God. The Mother Chucker burgers. These are glorious. If you order using my promo code this week, my promo code is Carne, C-A-R-N-E. You get free local next day delivery and a pound of Mother Chucker burgers. That right there, Mother Chucker. And, you know, if you really want to stock up, Thanksgiving's next week. Maybe you've got stuff going on at home with uh, the family that you live with, uh, the people in your bubble. Load up the fridge, load up, load up the freezer. Orders of over $150 with the promo code TEMP. Get a Thermoworks super fast pocket meat thermometer. Again, happy to meet you. Happy to M-E-A-T, letter U, dot com. Order now or forever hold your meat. Tonight, I'm rejoined. <laughs> what, are we I, was like, I was jacked about pocket meat because like that's one of the things that I've been working on. My friend Tony B's got these steak chips. That is considered pocket meat, Tony B's steak chips. So, I mean. I, I like the fact that I say, hold your meat, and there's Vinopal just laughing. Just, we're just 13 like years a, old. Like a, like a teenage boy. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> uh, so, this is a, retur a return appearance from both of you. It's okay. Not to be okay. Hope for the Day is a Chicago-based nonprofit organization focusing on suicide prevention by providing outreach and mental health education through the use of music and art. I'm joined tonight from Hope for the Day's Mike Vinopal, Director of Education, and Joel Frieders, Director of Public Policy. I'm always glad to talk to you guys. And this is, I mean, I think this is your fifth time on Carcon Carne during the pandemic. Uh, my only regret is I haven't done it more often. I, I think this is an important conversation to continue having. Uh, we're heading into a winter that, by all estimation, will feel kind of dark for a lot of people. But before we talk about the really serious stuff, I didn't realize that your office is near Roma's, the Hope for the Day office on Cicero. Uh, yeah, yeah that, uh, the place is just a classic Chicago staple, if you will, where you can just go up to that counter. They got the stools, too, that you can stay and eat your hot dog. It's a tall counter, too. Yeah, I, I just had hot dog on earlier this week. I'm like, dude, I yeah. went to Roma's. I had your atomic sausage combo. That is legit. Mm -hmm. Like, what was, the, what was the quote about encased meats? I was going to put that on a T-shirt. Uh, it, it's the hot dogs quote. It's there are no two finer words in the English language than encased meats, my friend. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that 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 sandwich, the au jus just running down your forearm. Uh, the hot, <laughs> they make their own house made jardinera there. That sandwich. <laughs> It's not cheap, but that, that is totally legit. So if I ever visit the home office, if there's ever an opportunity, uh, we, we should walk walk over to Roma's. Hell yeah. Mike, should we tell them about the attorney's office, which is in a former fast food restaurant? Do we oh, I know. I, I, I know it's, it's like an old Taco Bell, right? Isn't that uh, Peter? Yeah, that's, the, like, that's like just right right to the south of us. Yeah. Our building. So um, if you ever have to tell somebody, say, oh, we're at the, the Peter Francis Geraci Taco Bell. Cicero, got it. It's very, it's very straight out of Better Call Saul, that, that Taco Bell. 100%. I, I love that area. Um, 2112 uh, Fort Knox, right around the corner from yes. there. Yes. Old Irving Brewery. Just around the corner. Yeah, there there's go. also uh, Omega Yeast over there. There's, yeah. there's a cool little uh, uh, cool ecosystem happening right over there in that corner. Which, which makes sense. It's super easy to get to. I mean, it's right off the expressway. Mm -hmm. It's, I think it's a terrific location for any kind of business. 90 in Montrose, there's parking everywhere. Parking I mean, everywhere. Exactly right. So a couple of headlines made me want to talk to you guys. Um, last That's month true. in the Tribune, uh, it said mental health among black Chicagoans, a concern as suicide numbers rise. Just this week outside Cincinnati, after 15 students in Mason City schools were taken to hospitals for suicidal thoughts in less than a month, et cetera, 15 students. Uh, and in Wyoming, the, this just, I think this was October, Wyoming school districts may soon be required to train students in suicide prevention under a new bill that was advanced. I'm surprised that's not a more common thing. And I, I was glad to see this. 
but I guess the point is in bringing up the uh, suicide numbers with black Chicagoans, this thing with the 15 students outside Cincinnati, it feels like, and maybe it's the news drumming stuff up, but it feels like things are exacerbating. Is, is that reality? I would say so. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, before the pandemic, people had complicated, like <clears throat> multifaceted stress situations in their lives. And uh, that just got ratcheted up at the beginning of the pandemic. And then the constant, I'll, I'll use a phrase uh, our colleague Christmas uses a lot, this constant moving goalpost of like, okay, it's gonna be better here. Wait, no, probably not here, but maybe further down the line, that can really play with your, your head and kind of keep you in a heightened state of anxiety. So the longer that lasts, the more exacerbated everyone's mental health is. I, I know that the bread and butter of the work that we do is based on that, like typically on a, on a, on a, on a day prior to the pandemic, if things were going along pretty well, you can kind of gauge uh, like when your friends had a lot of feelings, but right now everyone's got a lot of feelings. Yeah. So it, it makes it infinitely more tricky, but there's like a kind of a two sided coin there though. Cause those 15 students spoke up about the fact that they yes. were having thoughts of harming themselves and they got connected with the help they need. Uh, the Wyoming headline, um, the fact that people are talking about underserved communities in Chicago Tribune headlines come on, let's keep going. We're almost, you know, we're not there, but we need to keep going along that track of calling out uh, deficiencies in the system. Yeah. It's, it's it almost happen. like the whole idea, the whole idea of all press is good press. Yes, the news is devastating, but one of the things Ugh. that we're doing now that we weren't before is we're actually going, this is a problem, let's talk about it. And that's what, I, that's what an article does. An article is essentially a, smaller microcosm encapsulation of everything that hope for the day is trying to do which is simply start a conversation because if those 15 kids are alluding to the fact that we need to start teaching kids simply how to get things off their chest at a much earlier age but then also on the other side of the coin teach them how to notice when someone is simply not themselves and it doesn't take a freaking phd to understand when your friend's going through some stuff so like take for instance my friend mike here two or three weeks ago i called him and said can i yell for a minute Sure. And Great. thankfully, I caught him at a good time. And I literally rang out a string of <laughs> S-bombs that would melt faces. I was pretty proud of myself because I lost my voice by yelling at my friend. I wanted, a, I wanted to reach through the phone and just put a hand on your shoulder, man, because I felt it. I felt yeah. it that you needed that outlet. And I was like, you yeah, know, this is my boy. This is this is what it's all about. I'm glad you called me. You know? but, but think about that on a, on a grander level. Like, I don't know if I would have felt like I had permission to do that a couple of years ago. And I'm 41, white and privileged as, as hell. As, so as heck. Think, about, think about if I wasn't as you know, fortunate as I am, I might be more inclined to shut up. So we should be thankful that these articles are being written, that these news stories are actually coming to the fact that, whoa, kids are going through some stuff. Yeah. And let that, letting them talk about it and letting them kind of emote that shit, that's, it's powerful because that's how we fix it. First, we talk about it. Then we make a plan. And who knows, like, well, not who knows, but we know that simply talking about mental health is how you work on your mental health. One thing I don't think I've done a good enough job of with you guys on this podcast is having you really explain what Hope for the Day does day in, day out. What we have that overarching mission statement, but what does that mean? What do you guys do? How do you work toward raising awareness? Mike, you want to go first? Sure. The uh, three areas that we kind of focus on when we're doing the work that we do is we want to meet people where they're at. So we need to do special kinds of outreach. We need to do outreach that's not been tried before uh, to really look at these problems from all angles and come up with modern solutions based on modern knowledge related to mental health. And we need to pass it on through education. That's like the second kind of very important central theme of the work we do. So the outreach is getting there, starting the conversation. It's okay not to be okay on a wristband is highly effective in starting conversations within the community um, and passing on a little bit of hope 
passing on a little bit of resources, but the education piece is what makes it applicable to an individual in the community. They learn to, okay, now I'm equipped with knowledge, language, strategy, and I'm not going to be burdened by bullshit from past generations that were misinformed about these things. I'm going to start these conversations for my sphere of influence, the people that I care about, because they don't deserve to uh, go through a stigmatized experience. So ultimately, the third pace being that you inspire individuals through that outreach, starting conversations, through that education, to then take it and make it their own. Make it whatever passion they have, kind of figure out a way, hey, how do I have an impact in my little part of the world? Because if there's a bunch more people doing that, that's when you create a movement that changes, shifts our culture uh, in the right direction, I think. Yeah. And then from my standpoint, in addition to being able to participate with the educational opportunities, because we speak to companies, corporations, governments, police departments, schools, doesn't matter. We come from a lay person's or a, a peer standpoint, meaning that we're delivering something that's clinically backed. We have a team of clinicians that kind of help us verbalize the words that aren't something that's going to, you know, either A, dodge around the conversation or B, be so far off of the, the, the actual topic that you end up, you know, missing the mark. So we have this education that we deliver to all of those types of organizations. And Mike talked about the educational aspect of it. But, you know, outreach can be relatively general, but that's whether we're, you know, doing a pop-up at, at an event or a concert or all the things that used to happen before March 12th. Um, but now it's more of the, we have this opportunity to, to give this education wherever somebody just simply has an hour to 90 minutes. So those opportunities are great, but that other step that he talked about, which is essentially helping people become advocates, not just for their own mental health and those of their community, but how do you do something publicly that's going to kind of make people go, I never thought of it like that. And it doesn't have to be something like, well, hey, we're going to raise a million dollars and do X, Y, and Z. No. Our friend Drew at 18th Street brewed a beer called Smash the Stigma. Yeah. And that is legitimately, it's a black dude in a white dominated industry craft beer in Gary, Indiana. He's talking about mental health and suicide. And it's oh, not by that the way, beer I love that delicious. place. Yeah, 18th that, Street's banging, dude. That yeah. place is fan fantastic. And it, it's awesome. like an oasis, truly. It is. <laughs> yeah. But, like through gestures like that. And then we've got Odell out in Colorado. They brewed a beer called Open Conversations. And legitimately on the side is a one, two, three step. How do you have a conversation with somebody? Because sometimes we forget that the, the act of communication, even though yes, it can be marred between people or there are, there's, there's problems between whether it's stigmas or there's generational gaps between people that you just can't communicate, it's still possible. And communicating about how you feel about whatever, thoughts, feelings, and emotions about food, music, freaking pandemic bullshit, all of those things matter. So being able to get them off your chest is simply knowing, you know, Choose your audience. I'm not going to talk about something that's relatively stressful to me, albeit you know small in the grand scheme of things, to somebody who's going through losing a family member to either COVID or cancer or they're out of their job. You know, like you need to kind of pick your audience, but it's okay to have feelings about whatever. It's simply getting them off your chest, which seems to be the difficult thing. For sure. And that's why beer helps. One thing I would add to that is that before March 12th, if you will, um, I, my job looked a lot different. I got to go to libraries, schools, businesses, restaurants, all sorts of different things. Uh, I'd meet with people and figure out different ways that we could uh, collaborate to have an impact together and ways that were authentic to that individual and what they were passionate about doing or what communities they were passionate about impacting. And now it more looks like a lot of Zoom meetings but occasionally there's a really cool thing in there that um, I don't think anybody else gets the opportunity to do. Like I got to go to the FBI here in Chicago this week and um, facilitate a conversation about men's mental health with, with regards to uh, the special agents and suicide rates within that very specialized law enforcement community. Um, and that's definitely not something I thought I would ever do. So um, I feel fortunate to just facilitate the conversations, even if they are digital. Um, it's so meaningful. The notes you receive, all of it's uh, it's 100% worth it when I get done doing it. And 
I've gotten to empower voices like Joel's, you know, um, and now we're like buds, we're like family. So with the FBI situation, how many levels of encryption did you have to go through for that Zoom meeting? That was actually interesting when we did, uh, we were supposed to do something with them in person. And because, uh, you know, anybody that wears a uniform, be it, uh, you know, first responder or a special agent, that stuff comes with like a whole different existence, a whole different set of experiences that are somewhat unnatural to us civilians. And For sure, uh, they're human beings before they put those uniforms on and put in all those hours of training and stuff like that. But we did have to not do our original plan of being in person. Initially, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were lucky enough to find a window of time where we did a selected group of in person socially distanced masked panel with like 70 people on on like a, a zoom call but not zoom because like you said they got they got like a special network that uh, they're not zooming over at the fbi so i, I want to go back to something joel was talking about earlier about being able to talk to people and recognize when someone is hurting or in need of, of help i feel like because of the pandemic because of our sheltering in place staying at home situation it's harder to pick up on that stuff i feel like people cycle through emotions in a different way uh, totally. maybe, maybe more or less frequently and because we're all in different communication cycles with one another than we were on march 11th uh, i think it's I, i'm guessing it's harder to pick up on that stuff yeah I, th I think we've lost a lot of the nuance because the nuance used to be through you know unspoken gestures and you know subliminal freaking you know things that you tiptoe around or facial expressions or like like, like, like when you can tell somebody's back hurts like they kind of like just do something a little different well the same is blatantly true for how people just interact with the people around them and how they freaking emote or deal with the shit that's on their freaking shoulders so like understanding that before we had those opportunities which we kind of took for granted myself included but now the fact that the only way you can really tell is when somebody says i am feeling like this and that's only if they are in tune enough to actually get it off their chest whether it's keyboard warriors or texts or freaking actually talking on the phone or on zooms but yeah man we've lost a lot of uh subtleness that we or subtlety that we haven't really been able to kind of utilize recently the feeling in a room right the, the yeah. whole vibe or, shit. yeah uh, you just have intuition when you're with people and uh you definitely get to see a lot more nuanced body language that's for sure and yeah that, that's why it requires just like a kind of a different approach to the conversation something that doesn't feel as heavy um that's why we always encourage people to like talk about the soda bottle analogy because then it's like removing some of the scary stuff. Like if you talk about a soda bottle exploding in place of talking about avoiding disruption that like escalates to a crisis stage, then you're talking about something just like that everybody knows and has a feel for it. this bottle of so soda being shooken up as a, an analogy for your mind and your mental health and the pressure we're likely all experiencing. And the roller coaster, the ups and downs emotionally that uh, is making it trickier for even people that are like living in the same space together to be like, oh, you okay? Like that, that's a lot of feelings. Um, and don't stop doing that. Don't stop saying, hey, are you okay? Those feelings seem like a lot. And I, I'm here with you. Try not to, you know, blow it out of proportion and just let them know that, yeah, this is hard for me too, but I know it's different. And Talk to me about it because I can see you're having a lot of feelings. <laughs> well, I know heading into winter and the holidays, this traditionally is a time when people's depression and issues really kick into high gear. Hell yeah. yeah. It's a hard time of year for so many reasons. Layer the pandemic on top of that. I mean, this seems like this is high alert time Yeah, for, for your mission. Yeah. And can we just like back up a second and say that daylight saving times is fucking stupid? <laughs> Dude, it's dark when I go to work and it's dark when I leave. Well, it's Why midnight right wait? now. It's midnight right now, right? Bullshit. It's, it's freaking two in the morning. I don't know if you heard that little <laughs> dog earlier. That was me being told to go to bed. <laughs> That's how late it is. This is stupid. The dark I agree with that. is not helpful. The darkness <laughs> is not helpful. There's a lot of things layering on our experience right now mm -hmm. that you're like, what the hell? Like, can, can we all as a humanity catch a break for a second? But 
hey, it's always darkest before the dawn. And I feel like 2021 is going to be like a mulligan uh, for the golfers out there. Because uh, this, this is not exactly the best time to be just being like throwing caution in the wind. We got to be able to just stick it out for a little while longer. And when we get to spring, man, hopefully creativity and experiences will burst out in all directions, just like uh, like a new renaissance that I believe and have to hope for to continue to like kind of encourage myself to not fall into this this pit that I'm 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 prone to falling into, quite frankly, you know. I have to have those downrange visions. And even if it's only like next week that I'm looking for I had to or tomorrow, it's it's helpful for me um, to think about the fact that if we if we just hunker down for this cold, long ass winter and we try to be as smart as possible and try and be a unified front as a American culture. Maybe we can get back to having a beer and clinking glasses without being like, okay, I'm going to rub some Purell now on, I'm my, clink so hard. on my glass because I clinked your glass and such, you know, but yeah, I'm like being paranoid about other people. We're 25 miles into the marathon. Like now's not the time to leave. Right. But that like, 1.2 is the rest of November, all of December, all of January. February is the longest but shortest fucking month on the calendar. <laughs> and we got at least two thirds of March. Hey, you know what? You'd be looking forward to that March 12th date if that's significant to you is what I feel like, you know? If you have that milestone, you have that kind of like cornerstone, totem, grounding point so that you can be like, well, damn, a lot has happened in one year's time and I have survived and I will continue to kick ass on the days I feel up to it and try to lean on my family and friends when I'm not feeling so up to it and be honest about that you know i gotta do shorter goals man like my goal posts have not been moving out and being meddled with like i'm going dude tomorrow's lunch is gonna be epic i'm having yeah, that's, and that's, cheese that's, again. Fair, man. that's fair man that's every other thing that i look forward to is either canceled or I, like, here's the weird thing i feel guilty about enjoying things mm. they can be stupid like the other day me and a neighbor got on zoom and had two or three beers playing video games a different video game i had more fun literally and this is what video games are to people that don't play video games video games are something that you can do with your hands and your eyes that remove the need to think about what you're doing yeah. and i'm terrible at video games it's like watching golf you're not actively involved it's just something to keep your mind and your eyes busy while you talk with your dudes yeah so i'm talking with my dudes i legitimately felt 15 pounds lighter i talked about nothing but then I, I felt guilty. Like, why did I have a good, it was a Tuesday night. Why did I have a good Tuesday night? I was with my dude on a Zoom. I get it. Uh, let's talk a little more about Hope for the Day stuff. Uh, tell me about the Demi Lovato thing. So it, that was amazing. I mean, that was one of the coolest, uh, yeah. coolest collaborations we've gotten to do to date. Marshmallow and Demi Lovato loved what um, our mission and the work we're doing um, and they wanted to, you know, give us that extra bump and use their platforms to drive that education, drive that conversation. And, and I don't know if you saw the music video, but it's, it, it'll, uh, it'll move you if you haven't seen it. It's like Demi and Marshmallow talking to younger versions of themselves. And there's a lot of little Easter eggs of nineties stuff in there. Like Dude, school, my kids, I have a 12 year old and two 10 year olds for like four or five, maybe six minutes. Their dad was pretty cool. I <laughs> <laughs> was it. it took Demi Lovato and Marshmallow. Yeah, that's what it's that's actually fun. what a couple of my coworkers have said that have children. Ryan Shannon, who leads our veteran programming, um, he said the same thing and he's a huge Demi Lovato fan. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't expect it. He's a he's, you know, a tatted up Navy vet. Um, and he was just jamming out to okay not to be okay. And, uh, you know, just being a proud dad when, when your kids are like, whoa, that's cool, dad. <laughs> like, oh, okay, now you care? Okay, cool. Very short cool. lip, but it was still like, and also the fact that like my kids have been wearing the shirts and, you know, giving out the wristies for years. So for somebody else to say it, 
like, hey, isn't that what you have on your hoodie all the time? She's like, yeah, yeah. here, have a risky. And it was like, outreach, bro. His kids came with me and him to uh, a couple different city council meetings and would like hit hit everybody with wristbands. It was you can't it was say a, no to like cute twins. Like, like, no, here. Unless you're a monster, yeah, yeah you can't do that. <laughs> which I took him to C2E2, which I'm glad I did because that could have been legitimately the last, you know, Comic Con experience or their first con and last con. But like, that's my daughter. Here, have this. Okay. Like even the guy in the big Thor outfit. Like, Okay. I, I, don't have, I don't have the emo. I used to go every year. I don't have the emotional stamina for the it's, big cons anymore. I did four it's hours. Dense. It's a long. It's a long couple of days, if, especially if you like, if you're hitting the hitting the showroom floor like every day, walking around. Also, I, I get claustrophobic really fast, and that's mm-hmm. a lot of tightly packed, slow moving people. Yeah. And it so, starts to smell like a locker room really like, quick. Yeah, the scents were a little intense for me because like the one dude that was walking in front of me with like these glittered wings that were like cardboard, I could tell that there was steam emanating from within. And every time he would walk, it'd be like, it'd be this weird smell of <laughs> on. And th- that's what somebody told me. It was like, yeah, wait till Sunday afternoon. I'm like, why? Was, look at the ceiling. And there's like this mist of perspiration. I was like, oh, it's like a B-boy battle. <laughs> So a lot gross. of people in one place for sure, and uh, definitely entertaining. But, but yeah, we got to do really cool things like the Demi Lovato thing, like being at C2E2. But I think the coolest uh, part about Demi was that she's just been very uh, open about her own story and a great example of how you can take a painful experience and it can become hopeful and positive for like thousands hundreds of thousands of other people because she she's got that global following so we had people join in education from all corners of the globe uh they got okay not to be okay merchandise and uh i don't think we've fully seen uh the end of that partnership either necessarily um it would be cool to continue to explore things that we can do with them demi was just hosting the people's choice awards for for gosh sakes and that commander in chief single she dropped too was also a big beauty. Um, just doing really solid work across the board. Um, impressed with that that lady a whole lot. And yeah, and it's it's cool to have like those global examples of how you can use your platform to say something that everybody kind of understands. But on the same day that that launched, which was September 10th, uh, World Suicide Prevention. October 10th. September 10th. September 10th. You're right. September you're right. 10th. Um, on that same day, we had a, uh, a local fundraiser group um, that was working on a project called Smash the Stigma. And we had restaurants from Des Moines, Iowa, and bre- restaurants and breweries from Des Moines, Iowa, all the way in Chicago. And 13 or 14, I think maybe it have been 15 different food entities and breweries all said, all right, I'm going to pick one thing, put it on the menu, and we're going to talk about mental health, and we're going to talk about stigma, we're going to smash the stigma. And they gave out wristbands to people that bought food. And basically, like, they picked one thing and said, this is why we're doing it. And you had full buy-in from all these breweries and restaurants, basically awesome. across Illinois into Iowa. That's how you change the world through having your own community go, you know what? Let's just talk about talking. And then yeah, we smashed it on that. You smashed it. Give me some fist. That stigma was smashed, bro, for real. So like it, it's stuff like that. And like, you know, the beer that Drew did from 18th Street, that's how you legitimately change the the speed and, 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 the, and the direction of the world. Because if we're not gonna talk about how we just simply talk, because here's the thing that like I've been doing my best to understand. I can be going through something and you can be going through something. But when you tell me about what you're going through and what you're experiencing, and I have a reaction to that, that is somehow me trying to instruct you on how you should be handling your own shit, that's what stigma tends to silence. So if we learn to just let people talk about the stuff that's pissing them off or excites them, or makes them happy, or gives them pleasure, or causes them sadness, without feeling the need to either pile on or take something from them, think about how much freaking easier life would be. No doubt. That's (laughs) it. That's the bottom line. That's That's it. it. That's what we do. In in all of our conversations, again, this is the fifth fifth time you've been on during the pandemic, we've never talked about Johnny, and I I haven't really talked about the roots of this organization. How old is Hope for the Day? Oh, we're coming up on the 10 year. We're coming up on the 10 year this uh, this spring, which is so amazing. Johnny started the organization after his boss and mentor, Mike Scanlon, who was a big music promoter, 
died by suicide. Um, and so 2011 is when we were officially established as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. But it was just Johnny and he didn't know what to do. So he went right into the concert venues and just, you know, shouted about it. It's okay not to be okay from stage, telling people uh, we got, you know, we're human beings and we got good days and bad days. And if you're having thoughts of suicide or self-harm or life's just kicking you in the ass, come talk to me at the back. I got a table, I got resources. And that little like core ethos of just getting in there with the people and talking directly about it and cursing your ass off if you needed to, to get people pumped up about the right things to give a shit. Um, that propelled us to heights we never imagined with things like Demi Lovato or our, our very own coffee roasting program, Sip of Hope Community Coffee Roasters was announced in October. Um, just cool things like that because kind of spilled over out of the venues It spilled over out of the music community into schools and offices and restaurants because we're all human beings and we are thirsty for this conversation we're so sick of the roadblocks and the obstacles that get in the way of us just being real with each other so um that resonates that that's why we're everywhere we want to be like on products because then it normalizes it. Oh, this hummus talks about mental health. This coffee talks about mental health. I must have to be thinking about my mental health because it's everywhere. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you do. We all do. <laughs> so that's what makes the work challenging, but also super fun because we are like trying to be uh, the Willy Wonka people that take an idea and instead of being like, nope, never happen, it'll never happen, try to make it happen. Try to connect the right people um, with the right mission and the right goals to do something that's not been done before. Now, I'm wearing a black t-shirt. You're both wearing black t-shirts. I have a beard. You both have beards. We're all of a certain age. Could I be an employee? I, I yeah, feel like I, freaking I likely. I've likely. got the look, right? Yeah, yeah, you sure do, and yeah. you got the cred. I've you got, got the cred. cred. You, could, you could you could talk about all the road dog stories and seeing all the shows. Mm -hmm. That I mean, right there, that's uh, you're a shoe in, JBO. Well, yeah. this is what I like as you're talking about Johnny. I think that's an important distinction. Here's this guy at shows talking to people. He's a peer. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys aren't talking to me wearing lab coats with pocket protectors. You, you got Joel drinking a gigantic, probably like a six percent beer. Uh, as we're doing this yummy, juicy <laughs> a little bit higher we're looking at like a 7.4 or something there really you're not messing around it says eight but the other day i was like dude i had two of those the other night he's like i wouldn't do that they're like nine all right <laughs> but I, deserved it. I deserved it today was really good <laughs> you've earned it i'm proud of you joel thank you thank you JBO. my point is this is peers and the, these are yeah everyday people, the people we're friendly with, people who look and sound like our friends saying, just talk. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the big advantage of the fact that Johnny recognized the fact that anybody who's talking to him about mental health is either rainbows and butterflies or it's coming from a clinician where it's top down and it feels like, shit, that ain't for me. Like, I'm not here to diagnose you. I'm not here to freaking tell you that your feelings matter. No, they do matter, dude, Jesus, fuck get it off your chest that's how you legitimize a conversation that's normally freaking uncomfortable because if you can't say something to me because i'm like somehow either elevated like uh, i've got a, a bunch of freaking acronyms behind my freaking last name or I, i'm coming at you like with this oh tell me how you feel no you're gonna scare me away and that's one of the reasons why like when i read about hope of the day back in 2018 i went that dude sounds like me. And then I was like, hi, I'm Joel. I'm a bald white dude, privileged as hell. Can we just talk about suicide? And I drove to Chicago and the first person I met was that dude. You know <laughs> what he is? He's a tattooed, bald, or not bald, tattooed, bearded, white dude that wears t-shirts and jeans. And that's legitimately my comfort zone. So I was like, you look like me. And then within the first 10 minutes, he was teaching me shit. I don't want to be lectured. I want to be talked to like, dude, I think the same way. Here's what I learned. That changes the freaking pinions. Yeah. Oh, freaking pinions. Agreed. 
Uh, looking ahead, you're doing something for Giving Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tell me about that. End of year giving is always like an important part of a nonprofit's like resiliency and uh, sustainability. So at the end of the year, we always try to reflect and uh, try to bring bring uh, that that into focus for our community who's supported us a lot. And we've got uh, a bunch of cool stuff going out in the mail to, you know, just the people that have supported us for the last decade in this work. Um, there is tons of you know, special merchandise drops and stuff at our stores, our, our coffee, our new coffee is thriving. So we're just making a big push for, hey, like, let's make it so you can give hope for, for a gift this year, you know. Um, so ultimately, there's going to be various programming throughout December that highlights um, what we've done, what we've accomplished this year. And uh, so we can take this time to reflect and apply anything we've learned this year to do it even better next year with the support of our community because there's a there's a lot to be thankful for um even though we are all feeling the weight of the world um as an organization i'm just grateful that we've been able to continue to thrive and help people um because i know it means a lot right now I think one of the other things that, that's just to kind of interject before we move on, uh, the idea of Giving Tuesday is incredibly important to our organization and every other nonprofit out there. But I also think that his mention of Sip of Hope Coffee, Sip of Hope Coffee is actually, it's a daily drinker. It's incredibly delicious. And I buy four or five bags. It lasts me about five and a half weeks. I'm then actively supporting Hope for the Day but I'm also buying my cup of coffee. So it's, it's understanding that everything can't be a donation with no give back. I still buy coffee and I like to support local and I like to support independent businesses. That's our attempt at saying, we get it. You're not going to be dropping 20 bucks every week because you, you appreciate the work that we do. We know that. Well, you drink coffee. So it, it's, it's finding ways of, you know, when you care enough to send the very best, give the gift. You know what else is cool <laughs> is that the Twitch community like the massive, massive community of life that includes so many different intersections of gamers um, that like to stream and like to raise funds for causes they believe in. At the beginning of December, there will be a, a couple different Twitch stream uh, fundraising kind of marathons, con competitions uh, to really have some action in those communities too. Um, so that's, that's right. really exciting because... I think that's just like going to be just like a massive amount of people that maybe haven't engaged in this conversation. Um, another example of being creative and how we meet people where they're at right now. I love it. All right. So as we're heading toward winter, this, this traditionally dark time, uh, what final thoughts can you offer or share with people who maybe are kind of heading into the season with some dread? Feel it. Don't be, don't make a, an excuse why you shouldn't be feeling the way that you're feeling. Feel it. That doesn't mean, you know, go out and kick a puppy. I'll be really pissed if you kick a puppy, but legitimately recognize when you're feeling something and either tell someone that you care about, get on one of those telehealth shits or just scream it in the freaking the into the nothing. Feel it. It's not something that we should be running away from. That's awesome. Can we all call Mike when we want to scream? Can we do what you did? Can we just all call Mike? Dude, he is. that dude is so dope like <laughs> who, who lets a dude go hey can i yell for a minute and then legitimately go <laughs> sure sure go ahead you good <laughs> yeah Ready. that's it thank you and then that like that helped like I, I was about to explode that day and i, I didn't run from it i'm like you know what i'm freaking pissed off so hope for the day is hftd.org uh Again, fifth time around, uh, always an important conversation to have, always a good conversation with you guys. Mike Vanopel, Director of Education, Joel Frieders, Director of Public Policy for Hope for the Day. Thank you guys for doing this and coming back on. Always, dude.